Cheating wife decides to have fun with her lover, but what happens next is shocking. Keep watching. Miranda came home after work, popped into the kitchen, heated up mashed potatoes and cutlets, and set the table in the hall in front of the big TV. No, there was a TV in the kitchen too, but it had a big screen in the hall. She wanted to watch tonight's concert of the band her husband, Enrique, loved so much. She was trying to figure out what was so enchanting about this band. Tonight's concert was being shown live on local television for the first time. The band was playing in a neighboring town, only 40 kilometers away, and if it weren't for her husband's business trip, they could have gone to this concert. It so happened that a week ago, her husband was warned that he was going on a business trip for two days, and he could not postpone the trip. Enrique was sad that he and his wife would not be able to get to the concert and he would have to sit in a hotel so far away from the performing group. And then, unexpectedly, today Miranda learned that the band's performance would be shown live on local television. Miranda stopped by the store and bought a 4 terabyte Transcend external hard drive. She had been planning this purchase for a long time because she felt she needed such a drive. Working as a programmer in the company, she often had a lot of left orders. Someone's windows was down. Someone had to install a program for video processing. Someone's office was out of order. Miranda took minimum payment for such services, or even did everything for free. And she always needed a database of software, drivers, utilities at hand. It was a dream come true. Miranda set up a recording capture from the television channel and saved it to an external hard drive. Then she sat down at the table and started dinner. And then the anticipated concert began. Miranda started the recording and suddenly, among those in the fan zone, she saw Enrique. Enrique stood with his arm around a pretty woman she recognized as Lorinda, Luis's wife. Enrique was friends with Luis and Miranda began to scrutinize the audience but she did not find Lorinda's husband among the fans who were reacting strongly to their idols. But she saw Enrique and Lorinda hugging and kissing to the music a few more times. There was no doubt that it was Enrique and Lorinda. The concert was over. Miranda sat in front of the TV, devastated. Her rage raged inside her, demanding an immediate release, but she still hoped that she hadn't seen Louis among the fans. And as if responding to her plea, her phone rang. It was Louis. Miranda, good evening. Hey, Louis, what do you do? I'm just watching the concert. Did you see them? Lorinda and Enrique? Yes. They were so happy. They were hugging and kissing so much. It was unbelievable. Did you know she was going to this concert? No, she's officially on a business trip due back Friday. So, two days. Where did you go? To the city where the festival is being held? No, in the opposite direction, to the regional center. She called on her cell phone today, said it's a lot of work, but she'll be done in two days. She'll be back Friday night. Enrique called me too, only he's not in the region, but a little farther away. He said the same thing. I'll tell you more. When I saw them on TV, I turned on her computer. I found a hotel reservation in the city where the festival is being held. Double room. The date says they planned it 12 days ago. What do we do? Luis, we're adults. I think everyone should decide for themselves what they're going to do. I've lived with Enrique for three years and I haven't noticed any faults, but that doesn't mean I won't react to what happened. Besides, just because I didn't notice his faults doesn't mean he didn't have them. I just really didn't want to see them. And I didn't find myself in a dumpster. And he never wanted children. He thought that we should protect ourselves and that it was too early for us to have children. Lorinda also squeaked that she should live for herself. No need for kids. We've been living here for five years. I don't know what to do. But it's easy for me. I'll pack my things and leave. I don't think I can forgive him. Miranda, I know you're a strong programmer. I looked at the hotel they're staying at. There are video cameras there. Tell me, can't you tap into them? Louis, I'll try. But why? Or maybe he just happened to meet her at a concert. 
Yeah, and that's why she booked a room for two. I said I'd give it a shot. Miranda quickly found the hotel where Enrique and Lorinda were staying. Just then, they came in after the concert and were getting their room key. Enrique said something to Lorinda, pointing to a door away from the reception. It was clear that that was the entrance to the restaurant. Lorinda nodded her head in agreement and they fled in that direction. Miranda had time to write it all down. She told Luis, Look, if you want the concert and hotel footage, I'll edit it and send it to you. What are you going to mount? Look, you can't just download the whole concert. You'll be downloading all night. What's the point? Enrique and Lorinda were having the time of their lives. He had been paying her unequivocal attention for a long time, but he could not devote himself to her. First, he feared her husband, and secondly, he was quite satisfied with his wife, with whom he did not want to divorce. Thirdly, he couldn't get rid of his mistress. But a month ago, everything seemed to have come together. His wife, always busy at home cleaning, washing, cooking, in his opinion, somehow paid little attention to his delays after work. Though their relationship with Lorinda hadn't progressed very far. Fifteen days ago, he found out that there was going to be a festival in a neighboring town, and his favorite band would be there. So he asked Lorinda to go there with him. Unexpectedly for him, she accepted the offer with ease. In fact, she even booked them a hotel room. He took two days off work and told Miranda about the business trip, making an upset face, even though it wasn't like that. The concert was great. The tickets were expensive, but they were in the fan zone, and he and Lorinda were at the front of the stage. The cameramen were hustling in front of them, and the image of the audience was displayed on a big screen. On the advice of one of the cameramen, he put his arms around Lorinda and kissed her hotly. She kissed him back. Several times they watched themselves close up, enjoyed it, and kissed. What they didn't know was that the concert was broadcast on local television to the whole region, and their hugging and kissing was not only seen by the audience. After the concert, after wandering around the city for a while, we arrived at the hotel. Enrique suggested that Lorinda go to the hotel restaurant, which was open until one o'clock that day. There were not many people. They took a table. A menu was brought to them. They ordered. Lorinda was sitting at the table thinking about something, and Enrique was already imagining how hot tonight would be. They ate dinner, drank wine, and went to the room. And then something went wrong. Lorinda suddenly said, Enrique, I think what we're doing is wrong. We shouldn't have sex if we want to remain friends, especially since in our plans, neither you nor I have any desire to separate as spouses. Man, then why did we come here? Originally it was implied, but now I realize it's unnecessary. I won't be able to look my husband in the eye. I don't know how you'll be able to talk to Miranda after this. I'd be ashamed of myself in front of Miranda. It's not like I'm going to break up our families. It's just sex, which we don't have to do anything about or anything else. And our soulmates don't need to know what we've been doing here. I'm sorry, Enrique. I can't get into bed with you without love. There are two beds. One is mine, one is yours. We'll sleep, go home tomorrow, and forget this trip. And our meetings after work must stop. This is all wrong. I realized how much I love my husband, and I don't want to lose him. All right, I heard you. Good night. In the morning, they got up and decided that they should take the train. It was only 40 minutes away. At three o'clock in the afternoon, they would already be in their town. Half an hour there, and they'd be home. And so they did. They managed to go shopping and buy souvenirs for their spouses. Miranda edited the recorded video and forwarded it to Luis. He called and said, Miranda, thanks for the recording. Tell me, is it possible to take pictures from the videotape? Of course I can. How many and what kind do you need? Where they make out at the concert with time stamped, and where they go to the restaurant, and how they go after the restaurant. I'll send it to you, and you can print it out yourself at work in the morning, especially since they're coming tomorrow. They'll arrive in the afternoon, and I'll be out of the apartment by 12 o'clock. But I don't know what to do with my things. Get a trucking company, that's what I've decided. I'll go to the mall in the morning, ask for boxes. I'll be there, I'll put my stuff away, and I'll be out of here by 11 my. 
You can do that too, by the way. You have an office five steps away. The director, your friend, will not refuse and let go at his own expense for one day. You'll take it on your own dime too? Why? I'll be working remotely. My only job at work is to keep the network running. And the main thing here is to do preventive maintenance at the right time. And if one of the users on the network forgets which button to press to put a dot, we have another programmer. So have you made up your mind yet? Louis, I'm a pragmatist. It's a shame he did this to me. I'll disown him. I suspected he was cheating, but I kept telling myself he wasn't like that. But I thought of another woman. Who, if it's no secret? Do you know something? We all know something. Okay, Louis, let's be honest. I made you a video. I'm going to cut up some pictures, and you tell me everything you know about my husband. All right, uh-huh. Does the name Isabella mean anything to you? Says. I know Enrique was seeing her. And now what? For all I know, he dumped her. Or is she his? He's hers. How long ago? A month ago. That's when he started staying late after work. You're right. Lorinda has been working late since then, too. It's the girl's birthday or some holiday without men. But it doesn't matter anymore. Did you order transportation? Louis, at night. What transportation? I'll figure it out in the morning. I'm packing now. Miranda didn't tell Luis the rest of the story. By the time she talked to him, despite the late hour, she had already called her director and discussed everything with him. Tom didn't want to lose a valuable specialist, and he didn't mind letting her go on vacation starting Monday. There was no pressure on the IT department right now. She had already stacked her things neatly, there wasn't much of it. Mounted the photos she'd promised Louis, sent them to his email, typed a short letter to her husband, which she printed on the printer, printed and attached a few pictures of Enrique kissing Lorinda, wrote that he was free of all obligations and she didn't feel obligated to fulfill marriage vows and promises either, suggested that he consider divorce through the civil registry office. She stapled the message and the photographs together and put them on the kitchen table, unplugged and disassembled the computer, packed the big TV, prepared everything for transportation. After some thought, she decided that her husband didn't need Miranda either, especially since it was registered to her as a gift from her mother. I went to bed. My husband never called. Miranda got up early in the morning, had a quick snack, and went to the mall. She knew some girls there who helped her pick out boxes and suggested she buy some duct tape, called the movers, and arranged for 12 hours. By one o'clock in the afternoon, she was pulling up to her mother's house on the outskirts of town. It used to be a village close to the city, but the city had swallowed it up as it grew. The transportation guys acted quickly as they were on their way on another order. Miranda drove her Mirandina into the garage, entered the house, and began pulling boxes into her room on the second floor. Her mother, after her husband died, lived alone, and Miranda made sure to call her every day, listening to her every word, trying to get a sense of how her health was. Since she didn't want to burden anyone with worrying about her, she always said she was fine. Once a week, Miranda would come and bring her groceries, clean her house, do her laundry. All this displeased Enrique, who thought that Grandma should be sent to a nursing home, even though she wasn't old yet. As a result, he disliked his mother-in-law, but she did the same to him. After moving her things in and partially laying them out, Miranda plugged in her computer. Then she went downstairs to the kitchen, ready to talk to her mom. Her mother looked at her and asked, Are you going to eat? Yeah, I'll eat. I've been working all morning. Tell me what happened while I set the table. Miranda told her everything she'd seen on TV yesterday and about the woman who had been her husband's mistress and whom he'd left. Her mother set the table and put out a pan of fried potatoes and homemade sausage. Miranda, narrating, began to eat. When she finished her story, her mother asked, What do you think you're going to do next, daughter? Mammy, what's there to think about? There's no man, and it's not a man. In fact, I can see that he doesn't miss a single skirt and he doesn't need children. You'll never have grandchildren. What about your job? You said it was a good place. 
Mammy, my work is going well. I took a vacation and I want to offer you to go to the sea with me. A vacation. Here we go. You're going to mess with me. I will, Mom, I will. When I was little, you took me to Crimea and Sochi. Now it's my turn. But we'll go to Italy. Daughter, it's expensive. If you want a budget vacation, it's to Bulgaria on sunny beach. But that's the Black Sea. And we can vacation in Italy. And that's the Mediterranean Sea. You were a teacher, then you worked as a school principal. You should see the world. Mom, I'll take care of all the expenses. Yes, daughter, I was. A school principal. I had 60 pupils in my school. When the city came to our village, our school was gone. Anyway, will yours be here soon? I think he's on his way to the train station. If by train. If by shuttle bus, he'd be home by now, melting my phone with his calls. Luis had been up all night and was nervous. He wanted to call his wife, but changed his mind. In the evening, he packed his things as Miranda had advised, sat in the kitchen, poured a glass of vodka that was kept for medical purposes, and drank it. He didn't go to the bar. He realized that he wouldn't hold back. He'd get drunk and make a mess of things, though he was shivering at the thought of his wife in bed with someone else. There was no question of where to go. There was a house left by his parents. There were no amenities, but investing money, you could do everything. The house was included in the city limits, and this village has now become an urban neighborhood. Actually, he had planned to make a summer house there, but now everything had changed. He wondered if he could ask Lorinda, and he thought no. They would no longer have a normal life, and, first of all, because of his character. He began to realize that over the last month their relationship had changed. Lorinda had become irritable, nagged him about nothing, and at one time even began to advise him on what hairstyle he should do. Today, thinking back on it, Luis realized that it was the hairstyle Enrique wore. There were other changes in the relationship, and all of them had happened, literally, in the last month. Lorinda herself had become more self-aware, dressing more sexily, spending more time in front of the mirror, critically evaluating herself, and there was nothing to talk about. Luis placed the printed photos on the unmade bed in the bedroom and left the apartment. The movers had already loaded his belongings into Mirandina. By 2 p.m., his belongings had been moved. He stood on the doorstep of his house and calculated how much work he had to do to be able to winter here. Since he was an engineer and had never been a verse to physical work, he was not intimidated by the amount of work to be done. He lacerally sat down at the table and outlined the initial arrangements. First, food. Second, a bedroom for rest. Third, appearance. And everything is interconnected. We need water, a toilet, but not a cesspool. A shower. But a shower is the same water and needs a sewage disposal system. Sighing, he began to organize his dwelling. The big plus of the location of the house was a large shopping center built nearby. There was everything there, groceries, building materials, and household goods. And importantly, all the communications of the shopping center were 10 meters away from his house. All he had to do was to get permission to connect to these networks, which, with his connections, was not difficult. Enrique and Lorinda drove up to the city. Lorinda was nervous. She berated herself for not taking the shuttle bus home. She would have arrived a long time ago. Enrique wasn't quite satisfied either, no. He liked the concert, but Lorinda's unequivocal refusal to have sex with him upset him. Nor did he like her decision that they should break up. But the platform was already showing outside the window, and he asked Lorinda, Where are you going now? To the mall. We should get some groceries. Luis probably ate everything, and I don't think he cooked anything. What about you? I'll stop by there too. I'll buy some cognac for tonight, give my wife a party. Although there's plenty of alcohol in the house. She doesn't drink, but they give her candy and liquor when she's working. Your wife is a genius. You buy her flowers. I'll buy. Can we go to the center together? I'll take a cab. We'll part there. We'll go in different directions. Okay. Chuckles. I see that you're still upset with me. Come on, forget it. We can't get this night back. 
We've had enough rest. But you expected more. It's no big deal. We're still young. We've got everything ahead of us. No, Enrique. You're a good guy, but there's no future for us. As agreed, when they reached the shopping center, they parted. Enrique went into the hall, put a bottle of cognac, champagne, a box of chocolates for his wife into the cart. Paid, put everything into a bag, bought at the checkout station. I ran into a boutique, bought a bouquet of red roses, and headed home. When he entered the courtyard, he noticed that Mirandina was not in her place. Obviously his wife had taken it, he decided. She sometimes drove herself, if necessary. And if Mirandina wasn't there, she hadn't come back from work yet. And it was early, she wouldn't be back for another hour. Well, that would give him time to set the table for her and have a candlelit dinner. He quickly went up to his floor, opened the front door and entered the apartment. He threw off his shoes in the hallway and put on his slippers. He went into the kitchen to put the alcohol he had bought in the refrigerator. In the kitchen I saw a stack of sheets lying on the table, stapled together. I took them and started reading. The letters jumped in front of my eyes. My mind refused to believe what was written. Miranda left him. But it wasn't supposed to happen. She loved him so much and suddenly. What if she's with someone else? He has a crush on Lorinda, and Miranda is seduced by someone else and goes to him. I wonder how her mom would react to that. The right teacher, always encouraging honesty and openness and family values. Or maybe she herself hustled and found her daughter a new husband. Enrique walked through the rooms, assessing what Miranda had taken. Nothing much was missing, only her personal belongings, some of her dishes, her fancy computer with the multifunction device, a large television, a laptop, and a desk lamp. Liquor and boxes of candy she had earned were missing. The closet was missing bedding. It's not that big of a deal, Enrique decided, and remembered she took Mirandina too. That was a low blow. Although, according to the documents, Mirandina was given to Miranda by her mother, that old bag. She couldn't be bothered to wait in line at the notary's office to get the deed of gift. Enrique sat down in the kitchen and reread the letter once more. Enrique, I've been watching your affairs with other women for a long time. I hoped you'd grow up and settle down, but now you've outdone yourself. Not only did you deceive me by saying you were going on a business trip, but you went the other way with the wife of a good friend of ours, Luis. He knows where you're going too. I think Lorinda is in for a surprise at home. But I'm not interested. Seeing the love you have for each other, and knowing that you have been seeing each other for the last month, I have decided that I am releasing you from all obligations, while at the same time I do not feel obliged to fulfill my marriage vows and promises. I hope you think it over and make the right decision. After everything that's happened, I can't be around you. I suggest we consider divorce. I think the best option is to go through the registry office. We have nothing to share. You can, of course, go and embarrass yourself in court, but I'll prove treason. It's up to you. Consider yourself free for a new relationship. Hi, Lorinda. P.S. My advice, don't let Louis see you. Enrique had a lot to think about. Somewhere, deep down, he loved Mernada, and now he just didn't understand how it happened that he couldn't even imagine. And where had she moved out to? And the fact that she had advised him to stay away from Luis, Enrique realized it himself. He knew that Luis had friends who could support an offended friend out of purely friendly solidarity. The other thing that hurt was that yes, he had dated Lorinda, he had given her a month out of his busy life, but they had nothing. Even that stupid trip where they got caught cheating was nothing. There was no cheating. Lorinda knew they were doing something wrong. And how did they know? Enrique automatically opened the bottle he had brought, poured it into a glass, and drank it. He immediately poured another one. Looking at the first two pictures, he remembered that during the concert, the cameraman had asked him to hug his girlfriend and kiss her. Of course. So, it should be said, they met quite by chance at the concert and kissed at the request of the cameraman to increase the rating of the band. They had nothing else going on. Whoever sent Lorinda the pictures is just lying to her. You have to call Lorinda. 
Lorinda left Enrique at the mall and walked around leisurely, buying semi-dry Spanish wine for herself and cognac for Luis for the evening. I bought some goodies to make sausage and cheese for the table and a couple of salads. She planned to make mashed potatoes for her husband. She felt guilty in front of him, but it was comforting to know that she had nothing with Enrique. She had found the strength to stop everything. After paying, she left the mall and walked home. It wasn't a long walk. It's very convenient when the store is within walking distance. Before she got married, when she bought this apartment, there was no shopping center in the neighborhood, and she had to go to the mall to get groceries. Lorinda walked into the kitchen, noticing that something had subtly changed in the apartment during her absence. It felt uncomfortable. The floor, with the lack of light, seemed dirty and trampled. We have to mop the floor before Louis gets home from work, she decided. She set the shopping bags in the kitchen, returned to the hallway, and put on her house shoes, noticing that Luisha's house slippers were missing. He must have left it in the bedroom. Lorinda decided and went there. He hadn't even made the bed. And then her eyes fell on the A4 sheets lying on the crumpled blanket. She picked up the sheets, turned them over, and sank down on the bed. They were pictures of her, first standing in an embrace with Enrique, and then kissing passionately, looking directly into the camera lens. And that's on 20 sheets of paper at different times. And most importantly, the photo of her and Enrique standing at the reception, where she gets the room key, and then they walk hand in hand to the restaurant. Lorinda went to the closet, opened it, and there were no Louise's things on the shelves. She realized that Louis had left her. The phone rang. The calling number was Enrique's. It was answered. I'm listening. Can you talk? Yes, I can. Are you home? At home. Is the husband there? No, Luis left me. He knows where I've been and who I've been with, and he left pictures of me. So here are the pictures. We met by chance at a concert in the fan zone, where, at the request of the cameraman, we kissed to promote the band. Yep, and it's like that in 20 pictures. You have so many? And among them are pictures of us, in a hotel, getting a room key, and going to a restaurant with our arms around each other. How do we explain that? I don't know, I guess I didn't look at all the pictures. And in the letter, what does he say? Nothing, no letter, no note. I think your husband figured something out and had you followed. I don't know, I don't want to lose my husband over this stupidity. I love him, what do we do now? I don't want to divorce Miranda either, but she's gonna be a prick and she's gonna come running. I know her. She's probably gone to her mommy's. And your Romeo, where would he go? I don't know. I'm at a loss. Maybe she and Miranda left us together. Okay. Cell phone rings. How about I call Miranda? She doesn't answer. I call the witch? She'll pick up. She's definitely gonna pick up. Today's a balm to her wounds. What witch? Yes to Mother Miranda. You don't like her that much? Why is she meddling in my business? She's giving advice. Headmistress of a school in the countryside. Lousy intellectual. She drove a man to his grave with her daughter, and she wants to build me up? She wants to take my house? Enrique, have you been drinking? Yeah, why? Do you want your wife back, or do you want to scandalize her? I want it back, of course. What the hell is she playing at? I see you're on a roll again. I'll see you tomorrow. You sleep it off, call me. Lorinda disconnected the phone. Then after a moment's thought, she dialed her husband's number and, unexpectedly, he answered. Louis, honey, what's wrong? We need to talk, but not on the phone. I see you took your stuff. You left me? I don't know. I'm not ready to talk yet. And yes, I left you. I can't interfere with your happiness with Enrique. Louis. I don't have anything with him, and I never did. Yeah, we've been seeing each other lately, just as friends. But who edited these pictures? I don't know. If you want dialogue, tell the truth. I caught you cheating, now I'm catching you lying. So let's figure out what to do next. I have no secrets from you because you are my wife, but you have secrets. 
Moreover, you are deceiving me. In fact, I have not been present in your life for at least a month now. You and your moods are completely unpredictable. You always explode at my slightest mistake. You constantly lie to me about where you've been and who you've been with. And the final nail in the coffin of our marriage was paying for a hotel room in a city you weren't even going to. Lewis, honey, why would you say that? How could you even think that I'm cheating on you and hiding something from you? We need to get together and talk. We really need to talk. I have something I want to tell you and some questions. But I want truthful answers to my questions. Of course you can ask me any questions you want. I have no secrets from you because I love you and you are my husband. Lorinda, I want you to listen to me carefully. I have a number of questions and some statements that I want you to listen to, and I don't want any answers right now. I would prefer that you, before we meet, carefully consider your answers. It will be difficult, but you really need to know that our life together depends on your truthful answers. I'm listening to your questions. So, I think you're having an affair. It's possible that your affair ended today because you got caught and you think you can jump from his bed back into mine. The questions are, do you love your lover? How many times have you cheated on me? And most importantly, the reasons you can give me to convince me that I want to stay married to you. Louis, I love you. Enrique and I had nothing but coffee shops after work. Yes, it was stupid and reckless of me to go with him to see that band. Don't say anything now. Think about it. You have time. And before you lie, I know that you booked the hotel two weeks before the band played and watched last night's TV program. I'll let you know about the meeting when I'm ready to talk. And when will you be ready to talk? I don't know. Maybe never. When I realize that, I'll file for divorce. And yes, you can consider yourself free of our marital obligations. But Louis, I don't want to be unencumbered. You have no idea how much pain you've caused me and how much pain I'm in now. But what's done is done. Lewis hung up the phone. Lorinda burst into tears, and then, wiping away her tears, she looked again at the pictures he had left her. Remembering his advice, she turned on her computer and looked at the local television program. Live broadcast of a contemporary popular music group immediately caught her eye. After navigating the website, she found a recording of this concert and turned it on. What she saw shocked her. The whole town was watching. All her friends and acquaintances were watching. Her co-workers were watching. And they all knew her husband. By her stupidity, she embarrassed both herself and her husband by making him horny in the eyes of all her friends and acquaintances. When the concert was being filmed, she could not even imagine for a second that there was a live broadcast to the whole region Upon reflection, she decided that she would meet her husband when he said so and tell him everything as it was. As for Enrique, Enrique is finished. Enrique wasted no time and, overpowering himself, after the third glass of cognac, dialed his wife's number. Miranda answered, I'm listening to you. No, Miranda, I'm listening to you. I went on a business trip and you bailed. You took your stuff and accused me of going out. Is that where you are now? What do you care? You haven't missed a single skirt in the city. You've forgotten about me. Always busy, always at work, and now on business trips. You can't get enough women in this town? You've switched to other neighborhoods? It's understandable. As a provider, you're nothing with zero salary. But why did you put Lorinda in bed? I don't understand. Her husband will meet you and kill you. You've disgraced him for the whole town, and me too. You have no idea how much pain you've caused me. What does this have to do with the city? Who leaked those pictures to you? Looks like Lorinda's husband hired someone? I took these pictures at Luis's request. So you were at the concert too? Why didn't you come to us? The concert was televised and watched by the whole town. Like on television? That's it. Wait, are the hotel pictures a montage? No, it's from the webcam at the front desk. But there are tons of hotels. But Lorinda's room was booked at this very hotel via the internet. How did you know about this? Look, are you drunk? Yeah, I've been drinking a little bit. It's not every day your wife cheats on you. 
then there's nothing to talk about. What's to say? Tell the truth. Maybe I'll forgive you and take you back. Goodbye. When you're sober, call me. Miranda hung up the phone. Just then, someone rang their doorbell. Miranda quickly ran down the second floor and opened the door ahead of her mother. There were two men standing there. One of them was Rodriguez, who lived in the house next door. Miranda said, come on in. The men entered, and then Miranda recognized the second guest, who had arrived. It was Rodriguez's son, Ivan. Good evening. Good evening, neighbors. Come on in. We wish we had Vera. Is she alive and well? Mom showed up. I'm alive and well. What happened? So, Vera, you asked me to fix the hen house, and just then my son was out of work. He's got nothing to do, so he'll help out like a neighbor. How can you be out of work? He was an engineer on a big construction site in Portugal, and now he's done. That's it? Kicked out? Oh, come on, Vera. The construction is over. The project is finished. So he came home. We decided to help you. He's a builder. How much will you charge for the repairs? You've already seen the chicken coop. We're not taking anything. We're just being neighborly. Well, if you'll pour us a drink tonight or sell us one. Why don't you go to the store? It's right next door. I did. They're doing an inventory in the liquor department. On Saturday morning, Miranda took her mother's papers and went to the travel agency. She knew the director of the agency, Victoria, well. They had gone to school together, then to university. At one time, Miranda had made her a website for travel services, which she maintained, making minor adjustments. Victoria was excited to see her friend, walked over, hugged, kissed, and asked, Miranda, how are you? You haven't visited me in a while, have you? Here she is. Vika, I want to go on vacation to the sea with my mom. What can you suggest? That's it. Turkey and Egypt are the hottest destinations right now. Anything in Europe? On the shores of the Mediterranean? Italy, France, Portugal. Listen, you wanted to go with your husband. Are you teasing me? Yeah, I saw the concert the night before last, too, and of course I recognized him. So he dumped Isabella? You knew that, too? And you didn't tell me anything? I think everyone knew that. And honestly, I thought you knew, too. And just tell me about it? No offense. I've known Enrique was a ladies' man for a long time. I thought he'd settle down eventually. That's what I thought. So, what's your decision now? What's to decide? I've taken my things, Mirandina's too, and I've gone to live with my mother. When I get back from vacation, I'll file for divorce. And you know it would be the right thing to do. More than right, he called yesterday and accused me of cheating. Is it true? Victoria, come on. All right, let's get this trip organized. Come on, hit me up. Charming? You and I haven't paid for the site and its maintenance yet. And it's making us money. Here's a tip. Italy, Pissarro, Embassy Hotel, three stars, three meals a day, the Adriatic Sea, there by bus and back too a visit to Venice, an overnight stay in Brno, and crossing the Alps, departure from Madrid. By bus, you're crazy, mom's 55 years old. Only 55? She's been retired for a long time. She retired before the retirement age was raised. She has 25 years of experience as a teacher. And in addition, she has worked in the north of Europe for more than 15 calendar years. I recently had two retired women who are well into their 60s take this route. They came back absolutely delighted. How fast can you get it done? Give me the documents. We need to solve the visa issue. So fill out the form and give me the photos. See if these photos are okay. They were taken recently. Yes, they will. As soon as the visas are ready, I'll call you. I have two tourists in this group who refused to go because of work problems, so it's a hot tour for you, departing this Friday. In the meantime, I'll have our visa specialist work on your visas. You do realize we don't have a visa center in town. What do I owe you? You should buy everything you need for your trip, and most importantly currency. The currency there is everywhere euro. 
In the Czech Republic, there are also Kroner, but you will not be there for long. With the travel arrangements settled, Miranda went outside, and that's when her cell phone rang. It was Enrique. I'm listening. Miranda, hi. When are you coming back? I've almost forgiven you. Enrique, are you drunk again this morning? No, I just woke up and remembered you went to live with your lover. Hey, what's your mom Miranda gonna say about that? I'm gonna call her right now. Enrique, I don't intend to continue talking to you like this and don't bother mom. She knows all about your exploits. I told her everything in detail. Yeah, she's covered up, huh? Why don't you ask me how I ended up at the concert? What did I do afterwards? Whoever made those pictures for you did a good job. Here's the deal. I'll meet you Friday. I'll call you back, tell you where and what time. Can't we meet at home? The house is your territory. I prefer to meet on neutral ground. I'll see how you behave this week. Okay, bye. Enrique threw the phone away irritably. Nothing happened with Lorinda, but he got into trouble. And she says that she took the pictures at Luis's request and that it was supposedly broadcast on local television. She's lying, of course. Besides, where did the hotel photos come from? I dialed Lorinda. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Keeping the house in order. Husband what? Wants to know the whole truth? What happened before the trip, during the trip, at the concert, and after the concert? What did you decide? I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to tell it like it is. We didn't have anything. And who can verify that? You? I'm afraid he won't believe you either. The whole town saw me kissing and hugging you at the concert. Listen, was the concert really on TV? Don't you have a computer? No. Miranda took everything. She left the old TV and she bought her mother-in-law a 55-inch TV for her birthday. Mom's eyesight is poor. She needs a big screen. Do you have one with a small screen? No, it had a good screen. Only she took it away. She left me a 32-inch TV in the kitchen. Well, that's not the point. They did show the concert. I'm there with you in all my glory. And the whole town saw it. And we didn't think we're not the only smart ones who came to the concert. There were other people from our town there, and they could see us too. So what now? Waiting for my husband's decision when he wants to hear me out. So why don't we get together? I'm sorry, Enrique. That's out of the question. We talked about it. Are you saying we're totally screwed? That's exactly what I'm telling you. But we had nothing. Look, your reasoning is going in circles. Okay, bye. I don't need to call you. Is there anything I can do to help? With what? If you're so lonely, you'll miss a man's affection. If I'm lonely and bored, I'll find a real man. Don't call me again. I'm not interested in you. Enrique flipped his phone away again. Miranda was planning to meet him on Friday, he thought. There shouldn't be any hookups until Friday. He surveyed the mess in the apartment, went into the kitchen, turned on the TV, and started making breakfast. At that time, the local channel showed a program about his favorite band, and in the clips from the concerts he saw himself kissing Lorinda tenderly. At the end of the program, it was additionally said that the recent concert would be shown again, as requested by the viewers. Enrique grumbled, got dressed, and went to the mall to get a bottle. Remembering that today and tomorrow were his days off, he took three bottles of cognac and a couple of liters of beer. Luis took advantage of the weekend to start the renovation of his home in the morning. He already had all the necessary building materials. Now he just had to get his hands on them. He started with equipping the shower and toilet room. Everything turned out well because some preparations for this work had already been made. Namely, cold water was already brought into the house. The heating boiler was installed. Now it was necessary to solve the issue of water drainage and installation of a shower cabin, which he did on Saturday, undistracted by phone calls and texts. Eventually, he turned off the phone altogether. Miranda returned to her mother's house and realized that she wasn't worried about Enrique's infidelity. He had become a stranger to her. It must be simple, she thought. I knew he was going out, and I was ready for it. And not just ready, 
I wanted to break up with him. In the bouquet and confetti period, three years ago, Enrique seemed to her a man with a big soul, literate and well-read. He was handsome, athletic, moderately charming, and could hold a conversation on any topic. Now Miranda realized that Enrique was just a disposable man with whom she talked for a couple of days and should not do it anymore. He should be forgotten after that. She didn't even understand why Enrique had proposed to her now, and she certainly didn't know why she had said yes. Miranda was a serious girl, and she gave herself to her studies. Maybe it was just time. She loved Enrique somewhere, cared for him, but quickly realized that the tinsel she had seen in the bouquet and candy period was crumbling. Enrique supported conversations on any topic, but he simply, having listened to the interlocutor, told him in response the same thing that he said to him, only in different words. His slender figure was from nature, and he did not do any sports, because he believed that sports, this is a traumatic activity. And he could not injure himself, for he loved himself most of all on Lorinda. As Miranda walked slowly through the town, she met Lorinda, who was walking with her head down, as if everyone was looking at her and judging her. But she had to go to the store anyway. Seeing Miranda in front of her, Lorinda said, Hello, Miranda. Lorinda, hi. Miranda, can I talk to you? About what? About what happened. I can't keep it to myself. And why do you have to talk in front of me? I'm sorry to you and Luis, and I must apologize. Let's go to the cafe. They walked to the cafe, sat down at a table, and ordered coffee. While waiting for the order, Lorinda started talking. I started dating Enrique by chance. Our offices are close to each other, and we often saw each other at lunchtime in a cafe. Then one day he suggested we meet after work. Luis, at my request, was doing a large estimate for my project, and he was working late. I agreed to meet Enrique without thinking about you. We sat in a cafe not for long, and he walked me home. After that, we met more often. He is an interesting conversationalist. I was not bored with him. He seemed very smart, but I had nothing else with him. Recently he proposed to go to a concert, and I agreed, lied to my husband about the business trip, and booked a hotel there, because the concert ended late and we could not leave immediately. We spent the night there, but again we had nothing with him. And who's going to believe that? You spent the night in the same room. There was no choice. When I booked the hotel, there were no single rooms. There were only double and triple rooms. And what about Enrique? Was he cool with you, turning him down? No, of course he was angry, and he's still angry with me. Especially since when I arrived, I told him we were breaking up. I realized I was a fool, and I love my husband very much. And my estrangement with my husband is my own fault. I was the one who loaded him up with my work and my estimates, and myself bored, and I began to spend evenings in the company of Enrique, purely as a friend, not realizing that he is a man and he has one interest in women, bed. But I thought we were good acquaintances, friends, and he would not offer me that. But I was wrong. As a result, I ruined your family and mine, and I don't know how to save a marriage from falling apart. Lorinda, I don't even know what to say to you. My marriage is beyond repair. And the reason is not only you, before the meetings in the cafe with you. He spent time with Isabella, and not only in the cafe, but also in her bed. Why they broke up and he switched to you, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not interested in Enrique. For over three months, we slept in separate beds. At this time, Miranda's phone rang. She looked. The call was from an unfamiliar number. Apologizing to Lorinda, Miranda answered it. I'm listening. Hello? Are you Miranda, Enrique's wife? Yeah. What else are you interested in? It's the skin clinic for you. We're on a Saturday. Congratulations, but what can I do for you? I'm definitely off. The thing is that a woman, Isabella, came to us and we diagnosed her with trichomoniasis. She said she'd been intimate with your husband, Enrique, for about four months. She's never been with any other men. 
I'd like you and your husband to come in for a test. When can I come over? We can do it today. The thing is, I don't live with my husband, so call him yourself. And don't tell him I know he's sick. I'll be right over. Miranda disconnected the phone and told Lorinda, There's a silver lining. There's an option to see if you were intimate with Enrique. Isabella got trichomoniasis from him. Let's go to the skin clinic and get tested. But I kissed him. It is not scary. Infection with trichomoniasis occurs mainly through sexual intercourse. It is almost impossible to get infected through domestic means, swimming in a pool or river in the shower. It is not possible to get infected by kissing. Enrique came back from the store, decided to set the table and have a good time. The phone rang, he grudgingly looked at the number, noted that he didn't know who was calling, and just as grudgingly answered it. I'm listening. Enrique, assume. Your concern is with Daniel, a urologic andrologist and ultrasound specialist. Wow, almost alien. What do you want from me? You see, a woman named Isabella came to us, diagnosed with trichomoniasis. You're the one she mentioned as a possible source of infection. According to her, you have a wife, and we have to invite you and your wife to be examined. Enrique was terrified. If Miranda found out about the disease, he would be finished. And he had no doubt that he was the source. Two months ago, he'd picked up a hottie in a bar. On the pretext of a business trip, he spent a wild night with her in a roadside hotel. In the morning, the hottie disappeared with his watch, phone, and all his cash. He asked the hotel clerk if he had seen where the red-haired girl had gone. He replied that she had left on a truck with two truckers who had picked her up in a bar. After that night, he slept in separate beds with his wife, but only met Isabella. She was the reason they had the fight. Isabella got into trouble. She tried to self-medicate. Obviously, nothing worked. So she went to a specialist. Enrique said, No, I haven't lived with my wife for over six months, so you don't need to invite her. I'll be right there. Miranda and Lorinda went to the dispensary and took the tests and were told that they would have the results in two working days. Miranda went in, spoke to the doctor, he called the lab with her, and they said they would have an answer by the end of the day. They gave her a phone number to call. Enrique arrived at the skin clinic half an hour after Miranda and Lorinda had left. When he found the right doctor, he knocked and, after being allowed to enter, went in. He asked, Did you call me? Are you Enrique? Yes. Tell me, what does urologist andrologist mean, ultrasound specialist? In the past, most diseases of the geniturinary and urogenital sphere in men were dealt with by urologists or venereologists. Today, with all delicate male issues, can and should be addressed to a narrow specialist, andrologist, who will help to find a solution even in the most difficult and, at first glance, hopeless situation. As for ultrasound, I am a specialist in ultrasound diagnostics, whose tasks include conducting the study and deciphering the results to make the correct diagnosis. Here is the referral, get a blood test and a smear. Enrique obediently took the referral and went to the lab. He knew the result, even without the analysis. Miranda came home. Her mother sat on a bench in the front yard and watched the neighbors, father and son, Repair the chicken coop. It was hot outside, and the men were naked to the waist. Miranda sat down beside her mother and told her, Mom, we're booked. We're supposed to leave on Friday by train to Madrid, and then a bus to Pissarro, in Italy, on the Adriatic Sea. Are you serious? I thought you were joking about the trip. What about feeding the dog? I also wanted to redecorate the kitchen. I'm going to make up my mind right now. Miranda approached the men, and turning to the older man, asked, Rodriguez, could you renovate the kitchen? I have all the materials, I just need your hands. Not for free, of course. Miranda, I think we can make a deal, and my son will help. That's not all. We should look after the house. I want to take my mom to the sea. So it's not work, it's summer, the chickens will find food, and I see that Vera has a hundred years worth of mixed fodder. The dog knows me. So don't worry, 
The house will be safe, and we'll look after the farm. It's a deal. At the agreed time, Miranda called the lab back and inquired about the tests. The result was negative for both her and Lorinda. After thinking it over, Miranda called Luis back and said, Luis, hi. Actually, Lorinda's not lying. She had nothing with Enrique. Did she say that herself? And she said so. You may not believe what she said, but it turns out that Enrique got trichomoniasis while out with Isabella and gave it to her. I understand that's why they broke up. She tried to cure herself, but the trick didn't work. So she went to the doctor and was forced to give her contacts. Enrique came up, and me, as his wife. But God had mercy on me. I hadn't been with him for three months. Lorinda and I got tested. We're not sick. So what now? You gonna make up with Enrique? Me? No, that's totally out of the question. And you're calling me to make peace with my wife? No, I'm just giving you information. It's up to you what you do. It's your wife and your family. Thanks for the information. I'll think about it. And I'll call Isabella back if that's okay. No, of course not. Will you tell me what she tells you later? I'll tell you about it. Luis did indeed call Isabella back. They had a long, confidential conversation. Isabella told him that she had fallen in love with Enrique and that she met him almost every day at her house. But about two months ago, she noticed that she was having problems, told Enrique about it. He accused her of getting a disease from someone else and he had nothing. They had a fight. Self-medication did nothing and she had to go to the hospital, where she named Enrique as the contact who had made her sick. She gave Enrique and his wife's phone numbers and said she still loved Enrique no matter what. Luis told Miranda about all of this when he called her back. In the evening, Vera called the workers who had finished repairing the chicken coop to dinner. Miranda also sat at the table, which her mother set very quickly. She was discussing with Rodriguez what repairs should be made to the kitchen. On this occasion, Vera put on the table a bottle of good cognac from the stock brought by her daughter. Gradually, the topic of repairs was diverted and they began to discuss Ivan, who was a good-looking man, but still single. Ivan asked, Dad, come on. I can still get married. Son, while you're thinking, the breeds will be gone. I'd marry Miranda, but she's married. Yeah, marry me and go to a construction site somewhere up north. No, I'm done with that, even though they call me. That's why I came home. I'll look around, get a job. All right, men. You sit down, and I'll go rest. Miranda left for her place on the second floor, Faith complained. Miranda was unlucky with her man. He was a no-good, no-account bum. She dumped him and came to live with me. When you're renovating the house, if her man shows up, kick him out. And don't let him in the house.